Hi guys. So um, chapter five, you're in the middle of chapter five at the moment, and we need a bit of mathematical tools. So we're going to be solving a lot of differential equations in this subject. Hopefully you have worked with that Python workbook where I show you the examples I'll be discussing now. But let's just uh, um, talk about differential equations. Guys, it's so important to understand what these functions do. We don't want to copy and paste lines of code using especially ordinary differential equation solvers where we don't know what's happening and we get the answer. We got it. We don't do all the programming in terms of what's happening in the background, but we do want to understand where it comes from. So a differential equation. In this first case, we're just going to work with a single variable y varying against x. We basically get a description of the slope. That's what we have. We call it rates in later on in, in, in CBI, but it's a slope. A slope that is a function. It can be a function of x and y. In this case, it's a function of x. In, um, in our examples, it will be a function of y. So it's a function of x and y. So this is an easy differential equation. You can solve it analytically and you'll get something like this. Okay. Very important to understand that all these slopes will vary. So this is just a quiver plot. I show you that this function can be presented by taking a specific x value, finding out, running the function, and seeing what the direction of the slope is. So basically, this is the analytical solution. We will find that if we choose an x and y coordinate over there, we can use this function to get the slope, and we will find that it's exactly tangent. I need to draw a tangent here. Very important to see that tangent. Let me try draw it. You know, it's all about a tangent. That's not a good line, but you, you, you get the idea. The tangent is described by the function. Okay. So if we do a differential equation, we basically only have this and we need a starting condition. Starting condition will be given by C or to determine the value of C. We can start at numerous places. Typically, we'd like to start where X is equal to zero, but that's not necessarily. So let's go on to the next slide. So what we have is, let's call it the slope field given by the differential equation. To solve for the differential equation, we need a starting point, the initial value. We'll call it y naught in the example that we're using over here. So basically saying, at if x is equal to zero, y has a certain value. Well, you can look at the notes. It's specified as a specific value. So that's where you start from. And from there on, you can determine the slope and keep on determining slopes in small little steps so that you can solve for the solution numerically. Why do we do it numerically? Well, I'll, I'll show you later that the, the, the differential equations that we're going to be solving won't be able to, you won't be able to solve them by hand, so we do this numerically. Please understand the slope is just the tangent to the curve. So we have a function for the slope, and we're using that function to get the concentration versus x or y versus x profile in this example. So please think slopes, slopes, slopes. We go on to the next slide. So we don't do the differential equation solver. We just call upon a function. Okay. You probably have learned a little bit about Euler. Euler is the simplest DE solver, but you get Runga Kuta, you get advanced methods. Whatever's happening in the background, you don't know, but at least you need to understand the principle. So this is the example. We start with a known initial value. Y has a value where X is equal to zero. And then we can get a slope, the function. This function gives us the slope. So we have a slope at that point. Now, basically, all that the function will do is it will extend the, uh, the slope linearly for a certain delta x. You can see the delta x in this example is quite big. So if we extend the slope linearly, we move off the curve. And basically, we get a little error there because our delta x was too long. Now, the solver will decide what delta x to use. It will vary the value of delta x. You are not concerned about specifying the step size of the numerical solver. But just know that we need to go in small steps. Otherwise, in big steps like I'm showing you over here. Here, for example, we extrapolated the slope. We got a slope value. We extrapolated that for a whole delta x. And then we get to a new value. At that new value, we can recalculate the slope because x has now changed. And then we get a new slope. And then we extend it to delta x. Now, you can almost see as, as we make delta x smaller, this green curve will 
collide or it will come closer to the real analytical solution. If it's very small, there's infinite differences between the analytical and the numerical solution. So, so, so what the solver is doing is we are solving slopes at a point. We extending that slope, that linear with a linear line for a small delta x value, the independent variable being x in this example, and then we get an estimated new value. From that estimated new value, we get a new slope and we extend that, and that's how we go on. Very important. That's what's happening in the background. Okay. So, so if we have a look at the Python code and you got the Python code, basically this DE should be defined as an integration function. You can see it's very simple. Just make sure you get your X and Y the right way around. Okay, for the solver that we're going to be using, you need X before Y. Okay, and then we get to the MATLAB code. First of all, you got to import the solve IVP function. That is the differential equation solver that we will be using. Now, as I've just mentioned, you got to specify the initial value. So in this case, we're saying the initial value is equal to a thousand. That's where we're going to start. Okay, obviously it has to be at a specific X value. And therefore, we also specify the initial X value and the final X value uh, sorry, there's a mistake here. It should be x max. Okay, so so what's happening here is we are saying we're integrating from this initial x value where we have a y value of a thousand up to the point of t max. Then we just define a linear spaced um, span of x, and that's just for reporting. Once the once the function have integrated, we say we want y values at all these x values that we've specified. So x span is just the values that we specify where we want I, y reported. And then the function is as simple as that. Solve IVP. It's a massive thing. It does a lot of work. But you have to give it the integration function. That's the one we've defined over here. You also have to give it the minimum and the maximum values. So the boundaries of the independent variable with which you're going to be integrating between. And then you also have to give it the initial value. You, we're always going to use, for now, don't worry too much, just put this in. Dense output is just making sure that the report is such that you have a lot of variables, variables uh, a lot of Y values reported, so that you can basically um, get all the y values on your t span don't worry too much about dense output just make it true also the method that's just the method we'll be using for our type of problems which is going to work the best so in terms of l s o d a and dense output just make sure you have it in there and then the answer you will see the answer in solve ivp is actually it, it gives you a lot of information what are we interested in for now just the y value okay so why i've called it y4 just as a variable name is just saying the answer and from the answer we extract the solution over the t span value that little zero there is just to say this is a um, one dimensional type of array and that's just to make sure well you need it in there i don't really know why but just just to make sure that the computer doesn't get confused python doesn't get confused we won't use this when we got multiple differential equations so please guys understand we need to give it a function we need to give it a range we need to give it an initial value and we just need to put these two things there because it's needed at that stage okay so before we finish our differential equations are always going to be multiple. So there's going to be a dy1, dx, dy2, dx, etc. And uh, um, what you see here is that the function now is a function of the, the, the differential function is a function of the y2 and the y1 values. They are interrelated. So you have y2 here and y2 here. You can try and integrate this by hand. It might be possible still, but uh, um, analytically that's complex. With a numerical approach, a, num a numerical solution to differential equations, it's very easy. Okay, so once again, we just give it the function. You'll see that this function now is like a vector. There is the first function and there is the second function. So y has two components in this case. Very important. That's that's implying that if we define an initial value, we've got to give a y1 and a y2 initial value like we have over here. Okay, so... It's, it's harder to visualize because it's now a three-dimensional space, but basically we can go to multi-dimension. We just have to give the coordinates of the initial value or the values of the initial value. I just called it y 2 here, and that will be 
10 and 0 as specified over here. We just say this is x max is the value that we want to integrate to. The x per is just the beginning and the end value. So we'll typically start, like in this example, from 0 to the maximum value. That's the span. And, and guys, this is once again just defining that we want 300 increments of reporting. So we want smooth curves. If we if we don't report enough values and we plot them, they, they tend to be edgy. So make it 100, 200, 300. We need enough points here. And of course, we're going from zero to a maximum value. Once again, solve IVP like before, exactly the same. Give it the function. The function now contains two differential equations. That's why the initial value contains two values. Okay. And the rest dense output method, that's the same as before. Now we can, after the integration is done, and you know, it might be a few seconds on your computer, but trust me, there's a lot of work, a lot of small little increments, delta x's being taken, slopes, and you know, you don't have to do the work. It does it in seconds for you, and then you just extract the answer. So the answer is just answer two, and we want the solution over the x span values that's defined, and there you will get your y1 and your y2 um, answers, and you can just plot them. And it's really that simple. As long as you understand what this differential solver, solve IVP, is doing in the background. It's taking the slope, extending the slope, getting a new value, extending from there. You got the picture. Okay, so there's the solution. Lovely. We can we can actually, if you have time, you can take your ruler. You can take your ruler. I'm going to try and draw again. You can take your ruler and you can draw a, for example, over there. We can, uh, 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 shit. Guys, I don't know what happened here, but uh, I can't flip back. I don't know how this works. But anyway, the point I wanted to make is you can take a tangent line. And you will see if you de if you determine the slope of the tangent line at that point, it will be exactly the function of the x and the y given in the differential function. Sorry about missing that slide. And last one, um, you actually now just want to know that as we go on, we had a y versus x, y being dependent, x being independent in the previous example, in the in the in these examples. But in our work, we will typically be worried uh, we will be concerned about the concentration values as the uh, as, as the dependent variables and time as the independent variables will be diff will be integrating over time that's about it so i hope this helps um we'll get into solving batch reactor uh, differential equations within chapter five have fun and make sure you are fully comfortable with that solving differential equations, iPython Notebook 5. Thanks a lot.